The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how you can install WordPress locally on your own machine. Now I am going to be using MAMP and MAMP is available for both Macintosh and PC so the process would be similar on your PC. I am working in a Mac environment but the steps that you're going to use are going to be very similar. What MAMP does is it gives you all of the tools that you need so that you can run WordPress on your own machine. This is for development or testing purposes. Obviously, if you install WordPress and build your site locally, you would not be able to access your site via the web. You would actually have to move the files to a server or you would have to start from the server. But this might be a good solution for you if you're trying to learn how to use WordPress and you want to be able to develop locally or perhaps you don't have an internet connection and you want to be able to work on a project or you just want to kind of play around with the application and see how it works. So before you can actually install MAMP you're going to need to download it from the MAMP website so I'm here at the MAMP website I would need to download the application and again I would just get the free application there's no need to get the pro version of the application I've already downloaded and installed the application so if you need to do that you'll just have to pause the video and do that on your own so I'm gonna go into my applications folder and here's my applications folder right here and you can see that I have MAMP and here is the MAMP folder I wanted to point out that there is a subfolder called htdocs. This is where everything that you're going to be creating that you want to run using Apache and MySQL needs to reside or go into. So the project that I'm going to be working on needs to go into my htdocs folder. So I've already downloaded the WordPress zip folder and remember that is something that we got from wordpress.org so I've already done this I've downloaded the zipped folder so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the zipped folder into the htdocs I'm going to double click on the zip folder to uncompress it and at this point you could throw away the zipped file you don't actually need that right now so I'm just gonna get rid of that as I mentioned before it's really important that you get a fresh copy of WordPress for every single project that you work on so you're gonna to want to do that instead of having this folder be called WordPress I'm just gonna change this name of this folder to be the name of the project that I wanna work on when you develop locally you will probably find yourself working on more than one project. So inside of the htdocs folder you're going to have different folders that are going to be the various projects that you're going to work on. This one I'm just going to call Demo 100. That's the same name I used when I set this up on Pantheon so I'm just going to be consistent and use the same name. The various files in here are all files that WordPress needs to live. Now currently nothing would happen with any of these files. If I try to open any of these files because they're all PHP files inside my web browser I'm gonna get an error message. In order for me to be able to use these files I need to now turn on Apache and MySQL via MAMP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the MAMP folder and I'm just going to double click on the MAMP icon to launch the program and here is MAMP and when you go ahead and start up MAMP I'll turn these off for a second if the servers are not running these little boxes right here are not going to be filled with green so right now none of the servers are running I have it configured and I believe this is the default configuration that when MAMP starts it automatically starts the servers. Since I've manually turned them off I'm going to click start servers and when I do that it's just going to run through and turn on Apache and MySQL so you can see that these things are both green now I am running the servers. Alright so the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to just click on this link right here open start web page and this is going to open up the MAMP page letting you know that MAMP has been installed successfully. So you can see this is going to give you some information about MAMP. 
the first thing I need to do before I can install WordPress is I need to go ahead and set up a new database. So I'm going to do that by going into the pull down menu right here for tools and I'm going to go to PHP my admin. This is going to take me to the PHP my admin control pane and from this page I'm going to create a new database. So I will do this by going to the database tab up here at the top and you can see that this is going to allow me to create a new database. I'm going to go ahead and name my database demo 100 DB. I like to put DB after the name of the database um, just so that I know right away that this is the database file that I'm talking about and talking to. I just find that it makes it a little bit more clear. So I'll go ahead and call this demo 100 DB. I'm going to click the create button right here and that's pretty much it. Now I have a database that has been created. So I do need to know the name of my database, which I do, before I can actually go through the WordPress install process. But now that I have my database name, I'm ready to go. So at this point, I'm now ready to do the WordPress install. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the address for where the WordPress files exist. So currently, remember, I have created a folder inside of my htdocs folder called demo100. I'm going to put in the URL bar of my browser localhost colon 8888 forward slash. That is the address that MAMP needs to point to that htdocs folder. And now I'm just going to put demo 100. And when I do that, it's going to take me to the WordPress install page. So this is our default WordPress install page. You need to pick the language that you want to use. In this case, I'm going to do English it's going to let me know, hey, welcome to WordPress. Before you get started, we need a little bit of information on the database. So we need to know the database name. The database name is, in this case, demo100db. We also need to know the database username and the database password. When you're using MAMP to create your database, your username is going to be root and the password is also going to be root. The database host is going to be localhost. And the table prefix by default is WP underscore. We're just using the default settings, so we have that information. We don't need to change any of that. I'm going to click Let's Go because I'm ready to go. And I need to give my database the name. So in this case, ours is called Demo100DB. Remember that our username here in MAMP is going to be root the password is going to be root, my database host server is localhost, and the table prefix is wp underscore. So those fields are already populated. The things that I need to change are the database name, the username, and the password. The username and the password, if you're using MAMP, are always going to be root. The database name is the name that you assign to your database. I'm going to click Submit and it's, I get the all right Sparky message. It says you made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now talk to the database. We're ready to go. So I'm going to click run the install and now I'm into the WordPress five minute install process. I just need to give my site some information. So I'm going to give the site a title and again I'm just going to call this demo 100. The username can be whatever you want the username to be. I'm going to have my username be Emily. I will assign a password and normally you're going to want to assign a password that is something that's more complicated but since I'm running this locally I'm just going to use a password that's not very complicated something that I can actually remember. I do need to check confirm use of weak password. I'm going to put my email address in here and I can discourage search engines from indexing the site. This doesn't really matter since I'm developing locally. Search engines are never going to find this site, so if you have it checked or not, it doesn't really matter. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to click Install WordPress. It's going to let me know that this has been successfully installed. I'm going to click Login. I need to put in my login information. I'll log myself in. And here I am in the back end of WordPress. Notice that the address bar is displaying localhost colon 888 forward slash demo 100 and now it's pointing to forward slash WP admin. This is letting me get to the admin portion of my site. 
And that's it. I've successfully installed WordPress in a local environment on my computer and now I'm ready to develop WordPress locally.